Hey y'all, it's Betsy and mom from Happily Ever After, etc. And we were not planning to film right now, but mom got some plant mail Yay. from Gilbert H. Wild and Son. So it literally just came on the uh, mail truck. Yes. And we're going to go up and open it for you, show you everything that's inside. But I, I kept seeing these ads. Mom kept seeing yes. them. She was brave enough to order um, from one of the Facebook ads showing yes. all of these beautiful daylilies and mom's weakness is daylilies. So she ordered a bunch. We've been waiting for them to come, hoping that it was a real sale and not a scam because mom has been known to order from scam places. Oh, well, we, I believe we all have done that. Yes. I have not. I am very oh. smart. <laughs> I scoff at you. <laughs> So. so let's head up to the porch and we're going to open this box and we're going to see what the plants look like. All right. All right. So here is the box. Go ahead. Mom's going to open it. From Gilbert H. Wild and Son. Yes. And they're in Reeds, Missouri. Hmm. That means the plants special. came a little bit, a little bit of ways. Special online for daylilies. And so I am very excited about the daylilies. You said you ordered more than just daylilies, though. I And I believe they come bare root. I suspect. Now, I've planted lots of things bare root, but I've never planted a bare root daylily. There they are. Oh, they've got. They're cut back, so they're pretty. Yeah, they're a pretty good size. Yeah. And I think you ordered 20 of them. Yeah, there's a whole bunch in here. Is this the kind of bare root that you want to soak in water before you plant? I think Oh, show them that one, Mom. Big. Yeah. Those are nice. Those are nice. So, what are, else did you get? They are in, uh, oh, gym. shavings? Yeah. Oh. I got, let's see. Hmm. Well, these are like individually wrapped. Some comb flowers, some black eyed seasons, and some chrysanthemums. Interesting. So, oh, yeah. They, they come in little. Look at that. Nice. Those are nice. I like how they... Oh, and they've got the little label on the side. There's the chrysanthemum. Here, let me show them, Mom. It's one of the chrysanthemums. This one is a black-eyed Susan. Oh, look at that. Mom, I'm trying to show them this one, and you're already trying to take it out of my hand. They were on sale, so I bought whatever was on sale. This one is a uh, black eyed Susan like that. And we'll take them out and look at it. Mm -hmm. Black eyed Susan. Black eyed Susan. She loves black eyed Susans oh, and do. day lilies. So I'm imagining she got quite this a few. A count on me cone flower. Oh, wonder what color those are. I don't remember. Black eyed Susan. White maybe? You were looking for white ones. These are Virginia's chrysanthemums and Virginia's favorite chrysanthemums. I would guess all of these are chrysanthemums because yep. the leaf foliage is all the same. This is a Black calamine cornflower. Ah, you got three of those then. Got three of those. One of them. Is One of them's bloom. already got a bloom. Yeah. Very nice. I don't remember what color they are. I, I think to Google it. I think they might be white. Well, I know you were wanting white ones, so yeah. it would not shock me if you ordered white this ones. Is the is there more chrysanthemums? Mums. Are they all the same type These are of mums? All the same kind of mums. Yeah, they were all on special. I know the daylilies were ten nice, for ten for. No, I got. They were ten plants for twenty dollars. Yeah, so I got twenty plants. Yes. Do you remember how much you paid for the other ones? I paid $6 each for the cone flowers. So that was $6 each. The chrysanthemums, I paid $2 each mm. for the chrysanthemums. So I got this many. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. 
She buys in sets of threes usually, oh, so that makes sense. And so three, three, three. Six of the Black Eyed Susans. Susans for $5 each. Okay. So well, we'll have to get them in the ground and see how they do, but. Let me see what it says about the day lilies, too. Does it give you any planting information? Yes. General planting and plant storage. If you can't plant immediately after receiving, place them in a cool, shady location. Your refrigerator vegetable drawer is best. Mm. Before planting, we suggest you soak the roots in water for four to six hours. So I I'll figured. Put them in water tonight and then plant them tomorrow. Tomorrow. You work the soil eight to ten inches deep. Incorporate good garden garden soil and compost. Make a mound. Put the plant in. You put make a mound in the center of the hole, and then you put the roots around the mound. That's how you plant. That's I won't be here tomorrow, but I bet Mom will film at least planting one of each of these for y'all so that you can That's see. Right, yeah. We'll see see how good she does. She's pack, working on it. Yeah, pack the soil well. Water well at the time of planting. Water every three to four days for the first two weeks, and then at least an inch of rain a week. Planted between 18 inches and two feet apart on each side. Put so, fertilizer around the plant two weeks after planting. She has some that are right down here in bloom. So let me take you down here and show you. These are the ones that she loves, and they're right here. And she has room for more here. I'd put one like here, there, 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 there. The ones on this side were attacked by aphids and we were, we were battling the aphids. And I think we finally won because they are, um, they, they aren't looking nearly as sickly and you can see they're already starting to put up new buds and the foliage looks much better, even though it's less. So, you know, we, those aphids were just there. killing us and oh, then she oh, only God. had two on each side of this little arbor so she'll probably put quite a few over here and then she'll probably put some in the back yeah. might put some down here yeah. might put some they over here each. So, yeah that's why I did it each I would notice that you did not call an offer to see if I needed anything. I do not want yellow daylilies, yellow but I daylilies. probably would have wanted cornflowers. Yeah, well, the cornflowers weren't cheap. So. Six dollars is half the price I paid for mine. Really? Yeah, I paid twelve. They are. I'll put a picture of the ones I got for twelve. I love this. They're very oh. pretty. They start blooming in. These started blooming. In These were one of the first things to start blooming in April, and they just have bloomed constantly since then, Look. short of when the aphid attack and was a happening. Big rush of flowers, and then they'll bloom sporadically for the rest of the summer. Yeah. So, you know, they're very pretty. Yeah. All right. I'm going to head on out, and uh, we'll see if mom can film. The process on her own. It's always a, a adventure. That's what we're going to call it. Okay. I'm going to try to do some of the bare root um, daylilies now. So I'm going to set up my camera right here. And let it do. I'm going to do in this area right in here where I have the daylilies. I have four. Yeah, four, and I want to have six. So I'm going to plant a couple in the empty spaces. So, yeah, there we go. Now you should be able to see. I'm going to have to clean out the space first because it, it does have some weeds and some uh, leaves. And then I'm going to plant them. These are the bare root daylilies. They're pretty nice, actually. I was very impressed by them. So, I clean out all these leaves first and the weeds. Move my daylilies over here so they're out of the way. This shows that I have uh, some daffodils in this bed right below this little flag. So, I don't want to put any where I have the daffodils. But I'll put them next to where I have the daffodils. 
And I also have some alyssum over here in this bed, just cause it smells so good. And I like to have it by the entry to my house. So, it won't take me long to get all these weeds out. There's not that many since I have mulch down, but I think I'm gonna get a little more mulch to put in this area since uh, it's a little sparse here for the mulch. There we go. That's pretty much everything. Or at least 90% clear. And then when I get some more mulch, it'll work better. That's one there. One here. I'm gonna move away some of this mulch because it's for some reason very thick right here, even though it's very sparse over here. I'm gonna put some over here. Doesn't need to be quite that thick. And then I'll put one right here on the back of the where the daffodil is. And this bed used to have a bunch of um monkey grass in it. So I'm forever pulling up monkey grass roots. But that's okay. As they say, circle of life. So there we go. And this is where the third one goes, right here. And now I'm gonna use my trusty auger that Miss Betsy gave me. Far, but it doesn't matter. All right, so don't have to make a big hole, just big enough to put the little daylily um, bare root in, as you can see, just like kind of like that. Kind of make a little mound in the middle and then put the root kind of right over that mound, like that. So, but first I like to put a little bit of um, uh, time release fertilizer in. So, the holes are nice and big, so that way the daylilies can put out some nice roots. start putting the dirt back up around it and then you know tamp it in and put the soil back over top of it it doesn't have to go too deep they're not very deep roots but there is a nice big hole there for them to grow into nice deep hole there for them to grow into. Post over top of it. Got quite a bit on my fence bricks. And then the last one goes back here. Get a little 
little closer so I can get the rest of this dirt that kind of went flying everywhere. There we go. Yep, a few more leaves that I didn't quite get out before hiding under this lantana. So there we go. So now you can see where I had four daylilies. Now I have seven. Okay. So I'm very happy with that. And I will go get my hose and water them in. Oop, another weed. Sometimes I have to go in between the bricks to get the weeds. That's okay. These poor daylilies were looking kind of rough on this side because the aphids really got to them. But you seem to have gotten rid of most of the aphids now. And the daylilies are looking a lot better. And they're sending up new buds. So I'm pretty happy. Go get the water right behind me here. I'm going to water them in. Ooh, get some of the dirt out from under my fingernails. Put it back in there. And that's all there is to it. So I got six down and 14 more daily. I am going to plant some mums back here that I got. I'm going to put them kind of around this glad because this thing will, it should bloom soon and then it'll die back. For the fall so i'm gonna do that and i don't know what color these are but they're called virginia's favorite chrysanthemum so we'll see when they bloom i'm gonna plant three over here move some of this mulch out of the way not mulch, really. It's really compost. But my poor little dirt needed some more nutrients, so I put a bunch of compost in here as mulch for right now. And then as I go along, I'll probably put more real mulch in the bed. So, just moving it out. And then once these uh, bushes get bigger, I'll probably move the chrysanthemums out again. But for now, it's nice to have something over here in this corner. So, these were on sale, I wanna say for $2 each. So, got a good price for them. This auger is just the right size for a four inch pot. Finished. And then I'm gonna back fill a little cause they're a little deeper than I need them to be. Yep, there we go. Backfill, backfill, backfill. And then put in some of the Osmocote uh, Smart Release Plant Food, which I love. It just releases itself, I believe, over three months. I'm just going to pull these out. They're a little 
little root bound, so I'll just kind of tear them a little bit and then plant them in the ground. So, there we go. I have some other mums in the garden bed, but none on this area, so I kind of thought, oh, it would be nice to have some back here. And I've always been told that you pinch back mums until the 4th of July, and then they will bloom in the fall. So we decided to let ours bloom a little early, and then we're gonna pinch them back again on the 4th of July and see what happens, see how they do. But I think they should do okay because everything was ready to bloom by May. I was so surprised. But usually, these were other mums that I had bought from the store that were already all budded out. And I just put them in my garden last year. So here we go. Oh, all done. And now I just have to water them in. Getting up from that kneeling position is always fun. All right, so mom got everything planted. You gonna show them, mom? I added that one of the bare root daylilies here next to these two. So it will grow up to be just like his, just like these, his big brother and sister here. Yep. And then, and then on the other side, other side, I did the same thing. I just didn't have as many of them last year, so I only put two. Only put what you had last year. So I put that one there. And eventually, as these get bigger, she could always divide them and oh, yeah. put more of them other places. other places. But she had 20, so she had to be a little more Judicious. careful in where she put them. But that's still better than last year when you had, what, like eight? I had, yeah, six or eight. Yeah, because I put four and four and two. And two and two. Eight. So there you go. All two. right, where's the next ones? Um, over here. Just trying to remember where she planted stuff. I planted these are the ones I planted on camera. Okay, so you guys saw her plant these, I guess. These three. One, two, two three. three. And then I planted uh mums back there, it looks three like. Back there by that. That'll look nice once the glad stops blooming, it'll have mums. Yeah, because the glads only bloom once spring. per bulb in the spring slash summer. Yeah. And then they're just nice foliage the rest of the time. Oh, did you plant a bag? Um, <laughs> I probably lost it on the street. Yep. Your bag now. All right. I have so many bags. All right, I planted... Three more here, one there, one here, and one back there. This one's a little baby one, but they all are still green. And they're all green, and they're doing, yeah, so, because some of them, some of them had as quite green. a bit of green, and some had no green. So it's good that they're all yeah. greening up. That's a good sign. Yep, exactly. And you don't have to deadhead daylilies, but they are happier if you do. You planted coneflowers back there. Put the coneflowers in the same bag? Yep, you got, what, oh, yeah, three coneflowers. Well, what I did was I cut this big mum in half. It was back there. The mum was here, and she she had three, and the middle one died. So she cut the back one in half that was and big. Moved these two here, and then I put those three white coneflowers back there. Yeah. You can see where she already deadheaded the top one. And it gets really hot here in the middle of the day, so and I'm gonna pinch it back even pinch more. Back that 
But so uh, the the buckets there, she uses That's if it I gets to protect them. really hot, she'll just take them and pop it over them. Especially when she first planted them. Yeah, I don't even think they need to be out here anymore. They they, they're they're looking them. fine, but they were really wilty. So the it's day I water, 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 and then protect them from the sun till they kind of yeah. root That's in. That's a big white butterfly. That's a big white butterfly bush, but she didn't plant that today. All right. Where else did you plant stuff, Mom? All over here. We've been working over here, so it's changed a bit. Yeah, we, I planted three of the uh, daylilies, daylilies and along the front. Here, which I don't normally would have planted them a, that middle one a little further up, but it's it's. I'm gonna put a little border a border here. I think a like brick or stone border, so I didn't want them that close. Yeah. So but it'll be pretty. Yep, and I think that's all I planted in the front. The rest are in the back. All right. So we'll go to the back. To the back. All right. Okay. I had an extra daylily, and I had two here. One of them died, so I stuck one there. Just one of the bare complete roots. Complete the third. To complete the third. And then over here, walk this way. I put the three, three of the black-eyed Susans, the red... Rudabecchia goldstrom. So I'll have some yellow on this side too. This is the first place we've seen those, but they seem to be doing pretty good. Yeah, they're happy. Very happy. All the puppies. Are Girls decided it was time to help film. And then this was where I, I did cut one of these hosses in half because I was missing one. Over here. I have a little white mom, and I put these three moms here. I don't know what color they are. I'm going to have to look them up. I don't know. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. this, oh, good. They're so funny how they're so, like, straight up and down. I know. I need to pinch them back, I think. I'm going to let them get over the shock of transplant first. Then I'll come back and pinch them back. And over here, I planted you could see where all mom's binkas receded from last year. Oh my God, like right in the fence. Crazy. <laughs> I have a whole buttload here. Over uh, here, I put three over here, and I think I'm going to move that one to over there. I don't really like it right there. I think okay. I'm going to move it to over where that one little uh, two, three, that little, uh, little watering can is. Watering th can thing, and then I'll move the watering can. Put three of these. I do have a, one of my flocks. Decided I to said only one of your flocks is blooming. But I do have a lot of my daylilies blooming. And these are a bigger type of daylily. Yeah, those but are. But they're very pretty. Yeah, they start blooming in May and they bloom for like, I don't know, a couple, three. They're not weeks. quite the pink that I would pick, but they're kind of a. They're kind of a coral. Salmon y, coral -y color. Yeah. Eventually, I'll probably want some of those. But These are the prettier ones. This one that's getting ready yeah. to bloom. I don't have one in bloom right now. And then I have a really pretty, which you don't want. No. A double orange back there. Mom likes yellow and orange. I prefer more salmon, corals, and pinks. I got all of these in From Louisiana. that lady? No, no. Louisiana from my grandmother. Ah, see, um, I do like anything from Nana's house. And this is three more daylilies here. I like them here. Yes. And then I had chopped one of these hostas in half. And they're doing great. They're doing fine. And then these are larger of the rutabecchia that she planted several weeks ago. So yeah. those little guys, yeah, will eventually look like this and then even bigger. So. Yeah, they're getting ready to bloom. You can see the flower heads. Right here's one and here's one. Yeah. One over there. And then I have some over here too behind us. These. Yeah, they're mirrored on this side. These have been here for years and years, but... They kind of did poorly, and I had to replace one of them. Yeah. I what else? Anything they else? Get poorly because of their own fault. I believe they get help from little paws. These little paws right here. Yeah. Chip, did you dig up mommy's rutabecchia? Over here. He's a digger. Yeah, 
What did you plant? More of the rutabecchia here. And then I moved some of the um, vincas ah. from over there by... And then this okay. is all the this is all violet violets. ground cover. I got this from a lady, oh, over in Ozark a yeah. couple years back, and it's kind of all over the place. It's I, pretty. I have some here. Hopefully, I have, it'll keep filling in, yep. filling in. I have some under the other crepe myrtle, a bunch of violets. Now back there is where I planted the other mums. Mums. Just see them back right in there. Yeah. They look pretty next to the tiny hydrangea. And there's some mums back there. The mums that are back there are yellow. And I used to have a bunch of them there, and they just didn't make it through this last frost. But if you watch the last garden tour at mom's house, the big tree that fell right over this half of the garden yeah. uh, is all cleaned up. And then we, um, I had my yard man, he, uh, he cut a bunch of, pavers for me yeah. so i have a bunch more pavers over there that i can use just the making garden. a little pass everywhere with I them i made a path in the front bed and then gonna make some more pass back here yeah probably is that everything or is there something uh, somewhere else well these weren't in that box but i planted those um those lilies what do they call them oh like, she planted some stargazer lilies. stargazer lily bulbs back planted here those but those weren't from that box that those were from uh, sam's club that i got for mother's day yeah and i planted some more on the other side and then i did well, there we go another hosta in half and brought it she's up a hosta cutter i did plant this salvia yesterday she's been doing all kinds of stuff i planted that i had these um they're like, they're, it's called Athena Sun Uriops. They're like a marguerite daisy almost, but they are perennials. And so one of them didn't come back. So I bought one yesterday and I planted it. But yeah. I have a couple more. We had that really hard freeze and I think it just got some stuff. Yeah. So I and then you planted that. these. These are Super Tunia Mini Vista Pink Stars. Yep. I planted those in a couple of my big pots. Yeah. I have one here and one over there. In that big pot. So those will be pretty. I've got a couple of those in pots. And you still need to replant your strawberries for the year. I need to get some strawberries and put them in there. Oh, they are not but I think that's it for the backyard. Do you want to see where I planted those other um, lilies? Sure. Oh. Yeah, a path back here would help. Right in here, I had planted some uh, peony tubers, and they just didn't do well. But I planted the rest got of them. all the, these little cone flowers that receded. Yes, and then I received them, and then I put them all in this area. And then she planted a bunch of uh, those, those stargazer lilies. Stargazer lilies. So I should have three piles of the stargazer lilies and then a bunch of the cone flowers. And then this area with the violets is where she plants all her foxgloves back here. Yeah. So these are all foxgloves that we planted and grew out in the milk jugs this now winter and this summer. Were from last year. I had five yes. big ones, but the little ones are all from the milk jugs. So the ones from last year that are really big this year will probably not come back next year unless they recede. And, and the little big. ones will be big next year. And then we'll plant some more little and ones. And we'll plant more little it's ones. It's a two-year process. Yes. you got to put in new ones every year, but they last for two years. And some some places have really good luck with them reseeding. We don't, so we typically have to plant new ones. I'm thinking we might now that I've but totally recovered everything. She had the, landscape fabric down, yeah, and so that will help. Out, and then I put down um, compost. compost, and I'm hoping that will make a difference. It should. But either way, the ones we grew in the milk jugs are the Camelot variety, so they will actually bloom first year. So they should bloom if they get big enough. Like probably closer to the fall. In the fall. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm but these guys should be sending up sprouts any, any day now. Yeah. Some of the ones that we started in the milk jug last October, and so we started them over the actual winter, as opposed to these we started in January, are already blooming out front. So yeah. it really depends on when you start them. But I think that's it for today. Eventually, we will give y'all a tour of the back garden, but mom's still doing a lot of work back here. Yep. It it was beautiful for a very long time. She started this garden first. 
Um, and it still is beautiful, but she spent so much time working on the front that a lot of the annuals and the more tender perennials back here yeah. have kind of fizzled out. So now she's well, got the front established. So she's working on the back a little Let's more. Let's go show those zinnias in the back that I planted. Those are yeah, really Yeah, she just pretty. planted some zinnias. So yeah. we'll show you those and then we'll see you in the next video. All right. All right, so she planted these zinnias all around this back swoop. So these are the small zinnias. They go 10 to 12 high. They're just like the ones I planted at the front of my swoop. Huh, Freya? Yeah, you like zinnias? She does. They're very pretty. So hopefully they will fill in. They should get 10 to 12 tall and wide. So, all right. Oh, lost my shoe. Mom's still deadheading. No, I'm putting a... Oh, she's putting a drip of bitter in her pot. She put a little zinnia in this pot, too. Yeah, and, and for some reason, I didn't have... I had the drip on it already, but, but it's I not plugged think in. it wasn't plugged in. I think the dogs might have chewed it off. The dogs but... think drip is a great toy. Yeah, but this is like the ones at Betsy's house. Yeah. All right, say bye, Mom. Bye, Mom.